Welcome to the online training, module number four, lesson six. Lesson six focuses on instrumental variable regression. And this lesson will cover the following subtopics. First, we'll look at the introduction to instrumental variable regression. Then we'll look at the two-stage least spares approach instrumental variable regression. Then we'll also look at the concerns or drawbacks uh, with instrumental variables. And lastly, we'll look at the sources of instrumental variables. Introduction. The instrumental variable regression method relaxes the exogeneity assumption of the ordinary least squares or the propensity score matching method. And these instr instrumental variables are also robust to time varying selection bias. In other words, they take care of time varying selection bias. This is unlike the difference in difference method that we looked at in the previous lesson. Here, remember that for DID method or difference in difference method, an evaluator cannot control for selection bias that changes over time. Remember the assumption under DID is that DID recognizes and observed characteristics, but assumes that these characteristics are time invariant. They don't change over time. Recall again that an estimating equation that compares outcomes of treatment and untreatment groups specified as yi is equal to alpha xi plus beta ti plus the error term i. If treatment assignment D is random in equation 4.1.6 in the previous slide, then selection bias is not a problem at the level of randomization. However, treatment assignment may not be random because of two key broad factors. First, endogeneity may exist in program targeting or placement, for example. Programs are placed or policies are placed or an intervention is placed deliberately in those areas or districts or villages that have specific characteristics that may also correlate with the outcomes. Why? So that's an aspect of indigenuity that um, programs could deliberately target areas where um, there could be some existing environment or conditions conducive to support the intervention that might also affect the outcome from that place or that area. Second, an observed individual heterogeneity stemming from individual beneficiaries selection, self-selection into the program, which also confounds as experimental and which also confounds an experimental uh, setup. So these unobserved individual heterogeneity or characteristics, of the beneficiaries can also um, affect the evaluation process. And observed characteristics in the error term will contain variables that also correlate the treatment dummy variables. So in other words, it means the error terms may be interacting, influencing, or related to the treatment variable, dummy variable T. So they may be influenced such that the covariance between the two is not zero. As is given here, that is the covariance between the dummy the treatment dummy variable T and the error term is not zero, which means there is interaction between the variable T and the error term. 
which violates one of the key assumptions of ordinary least squares method in obtaining unbiased estimates. And remember in our assumptions area in uh, lesson one, we said there must be independence or an assumption of independence of regressors from the disturbance term E or the error term. The correlation between the treatment variable T and the error term naturally biases other estimates in the equation, including the estimate of the program effect B or beta rather. So in DID methods, this, was uh, this issue is resolved by assuming that an observed characteristics of targeted and non-targeted units or treatment and control units, group units, were time invariant, they were not changing. And then the differences were differenced out by the process, the DID procedure. When panel data are available, Instrumental variable methods permit a more nuanced view of an observed heterogeneity, allowing for these factors to change over time. An example is an observed entrepreneurial talent of the target subjects or ability to maintain social ties or networks, which may vary over time. The instrumental variable method aims to clean up for the correlation between the treatment variable T and the error term. So that the variation in T that is uncorrelated with E or the error term needs to be isolated. For that to happen, an instrumental variable, which is denoted by C is needed. And that instrumental variable must satisfy the following conditions. Number one, the instrumental variable must be correlated with the treatment variable T, such that the covariance between Z and T should not be equal to zero. In other words, there must be correlation between the instrumental variable that we have identified and the treatment variable. Number two, there must be, and there must not be correlation or the Z variable, the instrumental variable should be uncorrelated with the error term, such that the covariance between the instrumental variable and the error term is zero. But the correlation between the instrumental variable and the treatment variable must not be equal to zero. So instrumental variable Z affects selection into the program, but is not itself correlated with the factors affecting the outcomes. So it's only correlated to the probability of participating or not participating in the program, but does not affect the outcomes. Now, looking at the two stage linear least squares approach to instrumental variables method, we see that to isolate the part of the treatment variable that is independent of other unobserved characteristics affecting the outcome. First, we regress the treatment on the instrument variable Z. The other covariates in equation 4.6.2 and the disturbance term nu i as seen in the equation below. So this process is known as the first stage regression. So first, we regress the variable that is dependent. Okay, first we regress the treatment on the instrument such that ti is equal to alpha zi plus phi xi plus error term ui. So the predicted treatment from this regression Estimated T reflects the part of the treatment affected only by the instrument of variable C. So estimated T hat is, or T hat is then substituted for treatment in equation 
point one to create the following a just form outcome regression equation. The outcome yi is equal to alpha xi plus beta phi estimated z or z hat i plus rather uh, y is equal to alpha xi plus beta gamma z hat i plus phi hat xi plus ui close bracket plus the error term so this is the reduced form outcome regression equation after regressing t on the in, in instrumental variables in equation 4.6.2. Now, the instrumental variable, which is known as the two-stage least squares estimation uh, method, est estimate of the program impact is then given by estimated beta viv. Specifically, looking at yi is equal to beta ti plus error term ai as a simplified version of equation 4.6.1. Now, through instrumenting, therefore, t is cleaned of its correlation with the error term. So the instrumental variable method therefore cleanses the variable t of its correlation to the error term so that the variable t for program participation is cleaned and is independent of the error term so that the estimates are not uh, biased. However, well, the instrumental variable method improves on a weakness of the DID method by taking into account the unobserved characteristics, but also cleaning the variable uh, T for program participation of its correlation with the error term. There are also some concerns. And one of the drawbacks of the IV or instrumental variable approach is the potential difficulty in finding a good instrument or instrumental variable. So when the instrument is correlated with an observed characteristics affecting the outcome, that is covariance between instrumental variable Z and the error is not equal to zero, the estimates of the program affect effect will be biased. That means if there's, after cleaning out the T of its correlation to the error term, such that we substitute the error term, the, the um, program variable, particip program participation variable T with the instrument variable T as Z, and then it is found that the instrumental variable itself is correlated with the error term, then it means the problem has not been solved. And so the program effect will be biased. So if the instrument only weakly correlates with the treatment variable, the standard error of the instrumental variable estimate is also likely going to be uh, biased. Where can evaluators get or source instrumental variables? How can they identify instrumental variables? So generally correcting detailed information on how the program was targeted, that is through um, understanding of the background information and the designing of the program, the processes that were taken and how the program was implemented these collectively can help evaluators to identify 
sources of exogenous variation in the program's evolution. So it's important for evaluators to have a good understanding of the program design and implementation and so that they can identify an instrument of variables, variables that may be correlated with the participation, but they don't affect the outcome so that they can be used in the instrumental variable regression approach. Thank you for your attention.